Hello, everyone. This is hopefully our first attempt at getting through an example lecture and some problem solving using our new remote technology. So we'll see how this goes. For my first problem, I'm just going to keep going through some of the recursions we've been going through. So I'm going to give us an example. For this one, we're going to have t of n is equal to t of n minus 3 plus c times n squared. So it'll give us some recurrence relation and a corresponding base case to that recursion. For this problem in particular, I'm going to have t of 5 is equal to c. With these two bits of information, we, are now, we can, through doing some work, show what the complexity will be. So our general technique for attacking these problems is to do what's called the substitution method. What we're going to do is take the expression inside of t on the right-hand side and plug it back into the equation and then plug it back in and plug it back in until we eventually notice the pattern. So we want to plug n minus 3 into, and maybe we give this equation some sort of designation like a red star. So if I plug n minus 3 into my red star equation, I get t of n minus 3 on the left-hand side is equal to t of n minus 3 minus 3, also known as t of n minus 6, plus c times quantity n minus 3 squared. We're going to take this new expression for t of n minus 3 that we've just derived, I'll underline it in red, and replace it up here for t of n minus 3, because t of n minus 3 is equal to this expression. So making that substitution, we have t of n is equal to t of n minus 6 plus c times n minus 3 quantity squared. That part comes from just substituting in our new expression for t of n minus 3. Plus, we need to make sure to remember this, that cn squared that was in the original starred equation is still there. We cannot just drop it. So we have another cn squared sitting at the end there. Now, let's repeat this process again. We're going to plug n minus 6 into star. Notice we're always, always, always plugging back into the original expression. We do have a new expression here, but we're always plugging back into the original. So if we plug n minus 6 into star, we get t of n minus 6 on the left-hand side is equal to t of n minus 6 minus 3, which is n minus 9 plus c times quantity n minus 6 squared. Now we take that expression, let's underline it in a different color, let's say purple, take the un thing underlined in purple and replace t of n minus 6 with it. So we have t of n is equal to, making my substitution, I get t of n minus 9 plus c times n minus 6 quantity squared, plus I still have all of the other stuff that wasn't underlined in purple. So I still have c times n minus 3 quantity squared and plus c n squared. The point of doing the substitutions is to identify a pattern. So once I've done these substitutions, I need to identify a pattern in what is occurring. So the easy one usually is the t component. This t part, if we look here, was t of n minus 9. If we scroll up, we notice it was n minus 6 and n minus 3. That's n minus multiples of 3. So maybe we go, ah, that looks like t of n minus 3 times something, which that's something we'll call k. That's not so bad. For the second part there, c times n minus 6 squared plus c times n minus 3 squared plus c times n squared, we're adding stuff up. We're going to express that as a summation. What are we adding up? Stuff that looks like n minus 3 times something squared. That something, the smallest value we're going to plug in there, if we look, is going to be 0. If I plug in 0, I get cn squared. The largest value is always 1 less than the thing I am plugging in to t. So it's going to be k minus 1. When it was n minus 9 inside of t, I had n minus 6 here. When it was n minus 6 inside of t, I had n minus 3. When it was n minus 3 inside of t, I had n minus 0. So, bringing those two things together, 
we have that for any value of k, t of n is equal to t of n minus 3k from the red part, plus the sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of c times n minus 3 times i squared. We have one more step to do, and then this is reduced to a summation problem. We know how to solve those. The last thing is, I, this works for any value of k. I want to choose the most convenient value I can. The most convenient value of k I can conceive of is 1 so that I get to my base case. What do I mean by that? I want that t of n minus 3k adheres to my base case. I want that n minus 3 times k is equal to 5. I can choose any value of k, so let's choose this one. Let's solve that for k. To solve that for k, we would add by 3k, subtract by 5, divide by 3, r1 algebra, n minus 5 over 3. We solve for k. We're going to take that expression for k and we'll plug it into our equation. So t of n equals t of 5. Notice I don't need to do arithmetic. I know n minus 3k is equal to 5 because I chose it to be so. Plus c times the summation from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of n minus 3i squared. Now, you'll notice I didn't plug in k in the summation. Why not? Because I can't analyze the summation yet. The k is going to needlessly complicate things. If I was to plug in n minus 5 over 3 here, I suddenly have a horrible expression I'm going to have to keep carrying through and carrying through and carrying through. Why does this help me? t of 5 I know is equal to c. So the only thing I have left to do is analyze that summation. Once I've analyzed the summation, I've analyzed the entire problem. Now this is back in our real house. We know lots about summations. You could analyze this particular one in a variety of ways. I am going to choose to analyze it by bounding it. So I'm going to bound it above. Bound above. To bound it above, we take the original summation from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of n minus 3i squared. Our technique for bounding above has always been take whatever is inside of the summation and replace it with the largest value. The largest value this summation ever takes throughout all of its terms is going to be n squared. Because it is a decreasing function of i, I could have gotten that value by plugging in i equals 0 into the expression inside. I plug in i equals 0 because if it's decreasing in i, smaller values of i mean larger values as output. Why do we need to do something like this when bounding above our goal is to remove the summation index, in this case i, from the problem? So this, having done this, we now are adding up a fixed quantity n squared, it has no i's in it, a fixed number of times. How many times? k minus 1 plus 1 times n squared, top minus bottom plus 1. And now there's not much we can do without plugging in our value of k. So let's plug it in. Somewhere up here we had k was equal to n minus 5 over 3. So we have n minus 5 over 3 times n squared. Notice I don't need the minus 1 and plus 1 because they cancel out. So that's nice. Now maybe we notice that this is in big O of n cubed, and we call our bounding above all done. That's not so bad. Let's try and bound it below and see how that works. Bound below. To bound it below, we take the original summation, i equals 0 to k minus 1 of n minus 3i quantity squared. To bound it below, we're going to cut it in half and keep the larger half. The larger half here, because it's a decreasing function of i, is going to be the first half. So I'm going to keep the first half of the terms from 0 to k over 2. I could actually change this in a variety of ways to make it more convenient, as we'll see later. But for now, that's what we have. I can also, in the same step, plug in a value of i that is convenient. I want to plug in the value of i that makes it as small as possible. 
the way to make this summation as small as possible is to plug in the largest value of i. Again, it is decreasing in i. So larger values of i means smaller outputs. So the smallest possible value, value I get is plugging in k over 2. By plugging in a value for i and making it smaller, I can now add up a fixed quantity, n minus 3 times k over 2 quantity squared, a fixed number of times. How many times? Well, that's top minus bottom plus 1 times whatever the inside was, n minus 3 halves k quantity squared. So I can't do much again without plugging in a value of k. Conveniently, I've stored k somewhere in my RAM, so I remember that it's equal to n minus 5 over 3. Or we just scroll up and see, hey, it's n minus 5 over 3. Plug that in, n minus 5 over 3 over 2 plus 1 times n minus 3 halves times n minus 5 over 3 squared. Which may look messy, but maybe we can identify the complexity. That's all we need to do. Maybe we go, ah, I'm, I'm a genius. I know that's in big omega of n cubed. If you need to do more work, always be willing to show more work if you need to. With that in mind, though, we have it's a big omega of n cubed, and scrolling up, we notice it's also a big O of n cubed. So, using those two things, so the summation from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of n minus 3 times i quantity squared must be in theta of n cubed. That's helpful because now I can take the summation in my expression above and replace it with theta n cubed. So t of n is equal to c plus c times theta n cubed. And now we say, what's the dominant term? And that's definitely going to be theta n cubed. That means the original recurrence relation is also in theta of n cubed. So maybe if we want to draw a conclusion, it would be thus t of n is in theta n cubed. And that's it for a problem like this. The, the, there is a very little new difficulty in the substitution. The primary place this difficulty will appear is in identifying the pattern. You'll see some common things there. And in analyzing summations. But we've dealt with summations before. Any summation analysis we've done before will work.